Okay, so once again, let me reiterate, this is a continuation from our class on Monday. The relationship that we established last class before the test was if, when the, if the equation is in factor form like this, two brackets multiplying or two binomials multiplying, the number that's subtracting from the x, the number that's subtracting from the x is the x-intercept of our parabola. So if it looks like a negative three, in other words, if it's subtracting by a three, my x-intercept is gonna be three with the y value of zero. If it looks like it's subtracting with a positive six, the x-intercept is also a six zero. And this is my reasoning behind it. And we're gonna talk about that here. So why is this a coincidence? What is the mathematical explanation? You have to remember that all the x-intercepts are zero. What do I mean by that? Consider this simplified example. If I have, okay, so equals. If I have a number multiplied, how about if I have a number, let's call it x, but it's multiplied by a zero, what does that equal to? Zero. Anything multiplied by a zero is a zero. So I could have, 99 multiplied by a zero, it's still a zero. I could have um, 111 divided by 23, right? If that's multiplied by a zero, it doesn't matter that the answer is going to be zero. And so here it is. If I have y equals x plus two, and then x minus three, something like that. This is the logic. I know that if my answer is going to be a zero, then one of these has to be a zero. Would you agree? I think so, right? No? So again, if I told you the answer, I'm multiplying two numbers, but the answer is a zero, right? If I multiply any two numbers, but my answer is a zero, one of those numbers also must have been a zero. Zero times one, zero times two, zero times infinity, anything, it's still going to be zero. And so that's my reasoning. If I have an equation such as this, and I know that my y value is going to be a zero, again, let me remind you, take a look at all of the graphs in the previous page. Every single x-intercept has a y value of zero. Every y value is a zero. And so what does that tell you? This is how we reason out why those numbers are x-intercepts. You ready? If it's an x-intercept, so remember solve means calculate, right? Show your work. So x-intercept means the y equals a zero. So I am going to set this up. If I'm looking for the x-intercepts, y equals zero. So I'll have a little bit, little blurb right here. How about I have a little, I wanna distract you. How about I don't know. All x-intercepts have y equals zero. Okay, so you could write that in to remind you. Maybe I could put that in different color. Maybe I'll do a red so that you can see. So 
the entire equation is equal to a zero. So that means this could be a zero or this could be a zero. There's two different possibilities. So if x minus three equals a zero, how do we get x all alone? Well, right now it's subtracting by a three. I'm going to plus three and plus three. You have x equals three. If x minus six equals zero, I'm going to add a six to both sides, leaving me with x equals six. Hi. Julie. Julia. Julia. No. <laughs> Thank you. So do you see it? If my y value, take a look, take a look. If my y value is a zero, my x could be a three or my x could be a six. That's why when it looks like it's subtracting by a three or subtracting by a six, those are my x intercepts. I'll do it again. Take a look here. If my y value was a zero and I am multiplying by negative two, x minus one and x minus two, will this negative two ever be a zero? Of course not. So I am only looking at this bracket and that bracket. If this entire big equation is supposed to equal a zero, I must have multiplied by a zero somewhere. It must have been negative two times zero times, I don't care, I would have been equal to zero or negative two times, I don't care, times a zero, that would have been equal to a zero. Do you see the logic in where I'm going? Does that make sense sort of? One of those brackets must have been a zero, and that's my argument. If that's the case, that means this could have been zero, or this could have been zero. And so how do I get x all alone? Plus one, plus one, x equals one, plus two, plus two, x equals two. So my x-intercepts are, if y equals zero, the x is a one. So my x-intercept is one, zero, or if y is a zero, x equals two. So those are my two points. And again, if I were to graph it, it would be one, zero, and two, zero, probably be something like, something like that. Something like that. Those two numbers play such a big role in drawing out the equation. I really want you to pay attention to this. It's important that you know. So let's write some equations. Please take a, knowing that whatever your x-intercept is going to subtract from the x, take a look at my examples underneath. The question says, given the following functions, look at little f, okay? Given the following functions, Suggest a possible equation. My example is this. Okay. I noticed that the x-intercepts are, are you following with me? Everyone's with me? Okay. The x-intercepts are two or six. If it's two and six, I know that the equation is going to have some number value, I don't know what A is, we'll get to that much later. It's going to be X subtracted by a positive two and X subtracted by a positive six. That's it. Let's try it again. Um, I'll do the first one and then maybe I'll get six other volunteers to sort of help me. Question? Yeah, go for it. So take a look. The X intercept is a one zero and a seven zero. The only way I can get a one zero and a seven zero is if my function has two brackets and my X is going to be what? Well, subtracted by a positive one and subtracted by a positive seven. Let's do the next one. Someone, uh, I'm gonna ask, any some person to volunteer. 
And they might make a mistake because there's a negative two there, but that's okay. What could be my potential equation? I don't know what A is, so I'm gonna leave it blank. Maria? Yeah, it's X minus a negative two. It's X plus two and an X minus four. Let's keep going. Kaylee, I see you keeping up. Would you suggest the next one? Perfect, that's exactly it. And we don't know what A is and that's okay. We're, X intercepts right now are the most important, at least for this lesson. So let's keep moving. What do you think? Another brave soul. See if you can interpret the X intercepts as the equation. Hayden, are you with me? Are you thinking it's okay? Did you suggest what the equation might be? If I have a negative one here and a positive two here, and don't be afraid to be wrong, it's okay. You can pass, no pressure. Absolutely, that's okay. Then what about you? If it's a negative one, what does that look like in the equation? You're subtracting by a negative one, so it's gonna be plus one. And then you're subtracting by a positive two, it's gonna be minus two. That's it, okay? I'm gonna move on with the other three examples. What do you notice is slightly different between the ones above and the ones below? Yeah. Yeah, so the only difference between the up and down, just remember for these, the A value is going to be a negative number, that's all. Okay, just a reminder, A is a negative, A is a negative, but we still don't know what that number is. That's okay. We haven't learned it yet. F of X, A, two brackets, F of X equals A, two brackets, and F of X equals A, two brackets. Go for it. Okay, finish that off. I'll write the answers very quickly afterwards. And then we can finally talk about the next piece, why the x-intercepts are so valuable to us. We're gonna move on to 3.2, okay? I'll give you a quick second. It shouldn't take long. I think I think everyone's going to be very well prepared for our Friday. All right, let's take a look. The final answers would be, again, I don't know the A value, but it's going to be a X plus four, X plus two. This will be plus five and a minus one. This is a plus nine with a negative nine. Okay. All right. So my original plan was to start today with 3.2, getting you to practice your factoring because that's the whole point of chapter two. For us to do this, and get two brackets, what do you need to do? You're gonna to need to factor, right? That's, it, it was part of the plan. 
Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Right. Okay. So if we are able to understand that this is um, going to be my x-intercepts, we can do a lot of things with it. For example, everyone who's uh, with me, uh, before we move on to 3.2, um, I'm going to ask you to consider this. Imagine this was a trajectory of, oh, do you remember that bottle rocket question that we had in our chapter one? Remember there was like a garage and you shot a rocket from the garage? What do these points represent? If this was a, a rocket. Yeah? Yeah, doesn't it make sense that if the Y value is a zero, then we can say the height is a zero, right? So if the Y value is like three, maybe that's three meters up before falling back down to earth, right? Sort of makes sense if this was realistic or maybe something like this, right? Maybe someone is climbing up a mountain or something or climbing up a rock or whatever, right? And it tells them, it, it models a path of them going up and saying, yay, I'm, I'm here. And then they're coming down and, and, and whatever, right? Um, I know these symbols are, are, are silly, but as we understand more and more and learn how to calculate more and more these x-intercepts, we can successfully start telling stories with mathematics. So I'm going to ask you to um, let's practice the factoring first. OK, uh, take out your 3.2 sheet. So part one. And let's try. Let's keep it simple. Let's do the first three. So like, oh, let's do the first two examples and then move on to the actual meat of the lesson. Let's see. I might have to download it from our website. Give me a second. And I'll download it and I will open it up in just a second. There. Okay. So let's take a look at this factoring thing. At this point in time, you will see, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move down here, take a look. You will see that in the future, I will give you equations that are not in factor form, but take a look. I give it to you in normal trinomial format. See? And so it's going to be up to you to factor it when it asks you things like, when does the rocket hit the ground? So is it, what does this mean mathematically? We'll show each other. So let's practice this. If you are asked to determine the x-intercept, but without a picture, what does that mean? Put a little star next to that and tell yourself factor to find the x minus a number and x minus s form. Uh, Carter, you didn't miss much. Um, we finished off Monday's lesson because we cut it short. And the idea was that if I give you like x minus one and x minus two, right, on a graph that looks like this, this would be the one and that would be the two because you see it in your, like, like it's, it's, that, it's that idea, okay? So let's talk about this. Here we go. So if you want to find the x-intercepts, step one, let's factor. So we have x and x. Two numbers that multiply to eight, but add to six. I'll do that for you. Okay. The first example, I'm going to go through everything in detail. If this is the case, right? If we're looking for the x-intercepts, so 
the y value equals zero. Therefore, zero is equal to x plus four and x plus two. What does that mean? Well, if x plus four equals a zero, then x equals negative four. If x plus two equals a zero, then x equals negative two. My x-intercepts are negative four, zero, and negative two, zero. I know I wrote really fast. For the second one though, I won't show all the steps because uh, some of you might see it and I want to encourage you to do it slightly faster way. Okay. So again, let's say I give you something funky like this and I say, hey, find me the x-intercepts. I need to turn this into some kind of factored form. I might as well have given you this for a test question, right? I'm gonna first common factor. Next, what do you notice about my binomial in the bracket? I hope you didn't forget. What do you notice about that x squared minus nine? It's got a very familiar shape. No? Oof. I hope you remember, it's a difference of square. Right? X times X is a perfect square. Nine, it's a perfect square. So from here, if you see it, that tells me my X intercept is going to be negative three, zero. And my X intercept is going to be positive three, zero. Okay, so the left answer is what you should be doing if you want to be thorough or if you are new, right? The right side is what I would expect you to be able to do if you are experienced, because you've done this so many times, you know that x plus four is supposed to equal zero in this case, right? x plus three equals a zero, that means negative three, zero is my x intercept. Are you ready for some applications? This is it. If you can, step one, factor a polynomial or a trinomial. And then step two, know how to find the, the x-intercepts of it. There's a lot of different questions we can do. You ready? The first application questions you will see on the back page is, again, again another bottle rocket question. Another question I can set up is about money because money can, can be modeled by a parabola. Another example is things like footballs or sports, right? Another one has to do with, uh, again, other creative things involving height and whatnot. So here we go. Example one of an application question. A bottle rocket is launched from the roof of a four meter, meter tall garage towards the sky. The rocket's height is modeled by the function here. Height is in meters, time is in seconds. When does the rocket hit the ground? What does that mean? That's all I asked. Inside this is jam packed with information. So let's decipher. 
I ask when, what am I looking for? Am I looking for the X or if I'm look, am I looking for the Y? Am I looking for the height or am I looking for the time? Come on people, Aiden. What am I looking for when I ask for when? Am I looking for the height or if I'm looking for the time? Yeah, I'm asking, what is T? So in this case, it's like, you know, Y is equal to negative X squared plus three X plus four, right? I'm asking, what the heck is the X value when the rocket hits the ground? If the rocket hit the ground, what would my height be? Yeah. yeah. So literally, if I turn this into mathematics, right? It's like, what is my X when my Y equals zero? So I don't specifically tell you that what is X when Y is zero, but this is, means a couple of things. It means I have my height of zero and that equals to negative T squared plus three T plus four. And if that's the case, this basically is asking, what does it mean mathematically? It's asking, what is the x-intercept? So the question is not asking for x-intercept, but it's up to you to see this question and be like, oh, if I find the x-intercept, I know where the rocket is hitting the ground. I know when it's hitting the ground. You have to make that connection. So we'll do lots of these questions so that you see if I ask you a certain thing, you can match it with its mathematical counterpart, I guess. That's our goal. So let's factor. Mm. I'll give you like 15 seconds to think of a, a, a approach. What would the first thing be to make your life easy? Okay, hey, my approach, and I hope you thought about this, my approach would be to get rid of the negative one. It leaves me with a positive t squared, negative 3t, and then negative 4. And that's so much easier for me because my t squared term does not have a negative in front, it's a positive. Next. Seeing how this is a simple trinomial, I can simply find two numbers that will multiply to negative four, but add to negative three. The answer is negative four, positive one. All right, someone that's confident. Here's my factored form. Link it back to what we talked about in our first lesson. What are my x-intercepts? Or in this case, what are my t-intercepts? What do you think? Zach, you've been following, what do you think? About the factoring or about going from here to here? Everything, okay, take your time with it. x-intercepts would be zero, uh, four, zero, and negative one, zero. Do you remember our previous 
the number that seems to be subtracting from my x value are my x intercepts. No? So I'm not quite sure. Ask away, okay? You're going to see this often. What does this mean? It means the height is a zero when time is four seconds. It also means that time is zero when the height is negative one seconds. So the question to you then is, are both the x-intercepts acceptable answers? Yes or no? Four seconds and negative one second. Does any one of those seem suspicious? That final question. We would not have time equals negative one second. This is rejected. So there's two answers mathematically, but only one is acceptable. I'll say one more time. We would not have time equals one second, and therefore it's rejected. Mathematically, we call that an extraneous root. You don't have to know the word extraneous root, but it sort of sounds nice. It's an extra root, it's an extra answer, and we do not need it. This is rejected. Yes. Oh, no, 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 you're, you're right, you're right. I, sorry, I wasn't even paying attention. This is height. It, it's always, yeah, the Y value is always height. The, the X value was always time. See right here. It's a good catch. Thank you. It, it means that you're thinking, which, which is amazing, right? Time is the X value. Time is always the first one. It's, it's the way that equation was set up. It's the way we were telling the story. You're right. I was wrong. Okay. So again, this. Yeah. Oh, sure. So in this particular question, the X value was time. The Y value was height. It doesn't even have to be that way. I am going to show you another example. This time it's going to deal with money, right? So here's an example with height and time. We're gonna move on to another example that involves money. So let me read it. Enrique set up a Shopify account selling t-shirt prints of his unique artwork. If any of you are into art, I highly recommend you do something. It's, it's decent passive income. The function R of S is equal to negative two S squared minus 120 S minus 1000. It represents how much money is made. R, so the Y value is the revenue in dollars. The S, so the X value is the number of t-shirts sold in a month. So a little bit of detail, if he sells too much, because there's overtime and back ordering, the t-shirt supplier asks for more money. Here's my equation. R, the revenue is equal to negative two S squared minus 120 S minus 1,000. Read the question carefully. It says, how many t-shirts must he sell to break even? Hmm. What am I looking for and what do they give you? How many t-shirts must he sell refers to the red, right? The number of t-shirts. So how many t-shirts means what is S? If the revenue is zero, in other words, if I break even, Oops. let me get my highlighter zero in revenue. So what that means is the revenue is equal to a zero. So here it is. Zero is equal to negative two squared 
minus 120s minus 1,000. Does that look familiar? What is S when R equals zero is like saying, what is X when my Y value equals zero? What they're asking for is, what is the X intercept? Every time the Y value is zero and they want you to find X, we need to find the X intercept. So your goal is to turn it into this. So let's factor it, okay? Because this is something that you were, you have practiced doing, I'm gonna give you a minute to see if you can successfully factor a trinomial that looks like this, okay? I'm gonna give you a minute, a minute or two to see if you can do it. And then we'll finish this off, followed by a quick plug into your supplement pass for your test. I am seeing some, some good things. I do see people making their lives easier by factoring out the negative two. That's a really good job. That's a good eye. But of course, that leaves you with something still quite annoying. What the heck are two numbers that multiply to 500 and add to 60? You got it? Yeah, 10 and 50. Um, which also tells me, did I do something wrong here? Because that doesn't make any sense. You're not wrong mathematically, but what does that mean for my x-intercepts? What would my S equal? What? Well, that's the thing. Um, hmm. Yeah, so if the revenue is zero, that means I sold how many t-shirts? Negative 10 or? S equals negative 50. That doesn't make any sense, right? I think when I was designing this question, I meant to do the other way around. Uh, you know what? For the sake of making this equation, making this story make sense, can I change the equation so that it's negative two here, but everything else is Minus, 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 minus. Just 120, can you make that a plus please? So the numbers are all the same. So when I do this and you factor out a negative two, the 60 becomes a negative 60. Sorry about that. And if you do that, The 10 and the 50 still work, but what are two numbers that multiply 500, but add to negative 60? Negative 10, negative 50. I think that's what I meant to do when I designed this. I must have been tired. Sorry about that. So what does this mean? It means, let me do it as a text box. Enrique will break even if he sells 10 t-shirts or 50 t-shirts in one month. I'll talk about it one more time, right? We'll go through this data. Let's take a look at how we established it. I have an equation that tells me what my revenue is, how much money I made. And I wanna know, of course I wanna make money. Don't I want my revenue to be positive? No one wants to lose money, I hope, right? You can give away money for charity, that's different. 
You don't want to lose money. And so I want to know at one point, am I going to break even, get zero dollars, not negative, not positive, just zero. And so set my revenue as zero. What values of S will make my revenue zero? And the easiest way is to factor, because when you factor, it's very easy to figure out what makes the entire equation a zero. It's all step by step. If you're the type that needs to list it out, uh, I can write that out for you, because that's essentially the end. I want you to try number three and four. Okay. Here's my little step. Okay. Here are my steps in case you are wondering. And if you want to write it like, I don't know, do I have some space? Yeah, on the very back page, there's, there's a blank sheet of paper. How about I do this? How about I write this out for you? Okay. Step one. Start off. Step one. Um, determine if the y value is zero. What does that mean? This means you are trying to find x intercept. Okay. You have to check if there if the y value is not a zero, then you're not looking for the x intercept. All right. So you have to figure that out first based on the story. Use the story to help you. Step two, if, if one is true, uh, set y to equal zero, set equation to equal zero and factor and factor. Use, use chapter two to help you. Yes. Oh, no, as in make the y value equal zero. Set y to equal zero. Hmm? Oh, you mean this part or this part? I I'm listening, but could you clarify the question? by this statement? Okay. So uh, in the previous example, for, uh, for example, um, with the money, revenue was equal to negative two S squared uh, plus 60 S minus one, or sorry, plus 120 S minus 1000. We, if you determine that the revenue, it has to be a zero. In other words, the Y value has to be a zero set the entire equation to equal a zero and then factor what you have on the right side. In this part, I want you to factor. Factoring? Oh, it is because after you factor, you're going to get two things, right? And this and that must be a zero because the answer equals a zero and then so on and so forth. It's good questions, right? Don't, don't take everything at just memorization. It's really good. How to help you. And once you factor the binomials after factoring will help determine the X intercepts. That is, i.e. each bracket must equal zero, so solve.
see if I can move this, make this a little smaller. And then move this aside like that. And then last one, um, tell the story. Uh, answer question slash um, tell the story using X intercepts. What do I mean by that? Well, um, if you take a look at the next two questions, I'd like you to try maybe for homework. Um, if you're kicking a football, the X intercept is probably when it launches and when it falls. Right. If we're talking about a ball thrown into the water, the height would be a high going high, and then the x intercept might be when it plunges into the water. Right. Um, if we're talking about money, it's when the money is zero, you make no money, and you make no money. Right. The other example, bottle rocket, it's launched from the ground and it hits the ground. Same situation, just the x intercept, x intercept, x intercept. Let's get used to that. Okay. Any questions? So again, what will you need? Number one, you need to read the story and figure out if the y value is a zero. If it is, in other words, if you're looking for x-intercept, you're going to set the equation to a zero and then factor it. After you factor it, those brackets, those binomials will tell you what the x-intercepts are. And then use those x-intercepts to tell the story, whether it's landing on the ground, whether it's uh, money becomes zero or whatever the population becomes, whatever the case may be. Okay? Questions? Okay. I'm going to stop right there and talk a little bit about your supplement.